Hi guys, welcome to another chemical engineering tutorial brought to you by the ChemEng student. In this lesson we're going to take a look at the idea of the bubble and the dew points. So the calculation of the dew and the bubble point of a mixture is essentially needed when we want to estimate the stage or the temperatures of the reboiler or a condenser within a given system. And we can see the two general calculations for the bubble point and the dew point, respectively. But we'll look at these in some more detail um, in just a second. Now, saturated liquid, by definition, would be at its bubble point. Because any temperature that we add to the liquid after this point will cause the bubble to form into some vapour. So therefore we will no longer have saturated, i.e. 100% liquid. We will now start to have some gas involved within the system. And this is the same if we consider saturated vapour. Because saturated vapour of any liquid is at its dew point. Because any decrease in temperature will then start the, the vapour to condense and form a liquid. Now in terms of the k-value, then the k-value is essentially the distribution at concentration. And we'll see the interaction and in the, the equation for the k-value um, in just a second. Now the bubble point and the dew point will be defined in terms of the k-value and the concentrations when the following two equations are satisfied, i.e. the summation of the k value multiplied by the liquid composition, that's xi, is equal to 1. And then yi is the composition of the vapour phase. So for the dew point, instead of it being the multiplication, then this is going to be the division between the composition of the vapour and the k value. And the summation of both of these must equal 1. And another way you can think about it is in a percentage form, 1 would represent 100%. Now, say we take a mixture of four components and we'll consider the bubble point first. So say we have A, B, C and D. So therefore we have the ith component is going to be 4. Now we'll choose component C as a base component. Now you can choose any component that you want so long as you stay consistent within the calculations. But here we'll choose C. And what we're going to do is we're going to write a general equation, and we'll denote this as equation 6. Now this is just based on our um, online course, whereby we look at the precursors, um, the five equations, before we get to uh, this equation number 6. Now what we say here is that the summation of the uh, vapour fractions of A, B, C and D must equal the summations of the k value for each individual component multiplied by its respective liquid composition, that too must be equal to the kc value, so the value of k for component c, multiplied by the summation of the relative volatility of each component multiplied by its respective liquid composition. And all of these must be equal to 1. So therefore, we can relate each of these um, terms to each other. So if we knew the relative volatility, but we didn't know the, the summation of the y's, then we could use this and make it equal to 1. And then we can work out what the, the overall value would be. Now the calculations for the bubble point is essentially it's going to be an iterative calculation. So what we mean by that is it would be a trial and error process. And what we would have to do is we assume a temperature or we guess a temperature at the given operating pressures. And then we can determine the values of Ki or alpha i. Remember that alpha i is the relative volatility. So we need to use our judgment based on the system in order to guess our first temperature. Now the bubble point of the mixture is usually defined, as we say, as when the first bubble or vapour begins to form within a liquid mixture. Now this would be, at, we assume, constant pressure. So we can also use the interaction of Henry's law to see the, 
the relationship between the liquid composition and the vapour composition. Now the bubble point essentially tells us at what temperature or at what point the mixture will begin to boil. So any temperature above that point will have some form of vapour. Any temperature below that point we will have complete saturated liquid. Now for a mixture containing i number of components, we've seen in the previous equation that regardless of how many you have, the summation of each of the vapour mole fractions must be equal to 1. And we can prove that using the example that we've seen with the four different components. We would need the y component, the vapour mole fraction of each of a, b, c and d. And what we would find is that all of these values added together would sum to the value of 1. Now if we use the relative volatilities, then the new value of Kc can therefore be calculated by rearranging the right hand side of the previous equation that we've seen. So that would tell us that Kc, because we knew that Kc multiplied by the summation of alpha i xi was equal to 1. So therefore we can determine the value of Kc if we know the relative volatilities of all the components. Now, if we have certain systems, we can use the relationship of Henry's law between the vapour composition to determine what the liquid composition would be. Now, the temperature corresponding to the value of Kc would therefore be compared to that, that the one that we assumed. So what we essentially do here is we determine or we, we assume a value for the temperature, we determine the value of Kc, and then what we do is we compare this, when we substitute into this formula, we compare the two values of Kc. And what we say here is that if there is a significant difference between the values of Kc, then we have to use the calculated value of Kc to become the new one that we then substitute into the temperature equation, and then we can work out another value of Kc. And the point that we would use the, the correct value of Kc is when the difference between the new and the original value is very, very small. So when you were designing your system, you would have a certain tolerance that your Kc values should differ by. And that's when, once you've determined that value, you can then carry it forward into the subsequent calculations. Now, after the final temperature is known, then we can the vapour composition can then be calculated because we can now exploit this relationship. And this is the one that we've seen in the, the original equation when we all made them equal to each other. So once we know these values, we can substitute it either in terms of the individual K value for each component or we can do it in terms of the relative volatility for each component. So either or of these is acceptable, and that would allow you to determine the vapour composition of each component. So say this was component A, so we wanted to know what YA was. Then we would know or have to find out what KA is, and we would do that using the formula that we just seen in the previous slide, i.e. we would get this from assuming different temperatures. We would therefore need to know what the uh, liquid composition for A is, and then we need to know for the remaining other compounds, we would need to take the summation of them. And that goes again for the relative volatilities. Now we can then compare for a binary mixture, in that we can apply the Henry's Law principle to say that the vapour composition Y is equal to the relative volatility of component A multiplied by the vapour uh, sort of the liquid composition of component 1, then that would be divided by 1 because we assume that the addition of x and y will equal 1. So essentially we are just taking the difference because we only have two components within the system. Whereby we exploit, this is the ya plus yb is equal to 1 and xa plus xb would also equal 1. Because therefore, if we knew what the, compos the liquid composition was for, say, A, say that was 40%, then we would know that the remaining 60% must be made from component B. 
Now the dew point is essentially the opposite to the bubble point. Because the dew point is defined as a temperature at which the first droplet of liquid will form from saturated vapour. And this is done through cooling at constant pressure. And the dew point will essentially tell us when our mixture will begin to condensate. And for a mixture that contains the ith number of components, the principle is exactly the same. But this time, we take it as the liquid mole fraction must be equal to the unity. So, whereas with the bubble point, it was the y values, now for the dew point, it's going to be the x values. But the principle still stands that it's always equal to 1, i.e. 100%. So again, if we take the same example of A, B, C and D, then we now create equation number 7. But this time, we know instead of the multiplication between Ki and Xi, we can see that the summation of Xi, so the, all the different components added together, would be the summation of the Y values for each of the components, i.e. the vapour mole fraction, divided by the respective K values. And this would be, instead of having Kc multiplied by the relative volatility multiplied by x, we now take the inverse of Kc, so we have 1 over Kc. So essentially it is just the inverse of the bubble point calculations. And all of this is still equal to 1. That's the one thing that doesn't change. Now, the principle is the same that we have to use a trial and error iterative process in order to determine the values of Kc. So we still have to assume an initial value for T based on our analysis of our system, because we should have an idea as to where we start when we assume a temperature, because we should know the operating limits of our, say, our distillation column or our condenser or our uh, reboiler. We'll know the limits of temperatures, so that will give us an idea as to what temperature we can assume to start with. Now, if the relative volatilities of the new value for Kc is calculated, then we can rearrange the right-hand side of the equation in order to determine Kc. So it's exactly the same as before. We now can rearrange and we compare our calculated value to our assumed value. And this temperature corresponding to Kc is what we would then say if it falls within the limits, then we know that our assumed value is correct. If it's outside the limits, we then take the new value for Kc, i.e. the temperature that came with this calculated value of Kc, and we do the process again. And we just keep doing it until the, the values become close enough within the acceptable error. So after the final temperature is known, then the liquid compositions this time can be calculated. And we use the same principle in that we can use the K values or we can use it in terms of the relative volatility. So if we only knew the values of K for the individual components, we could still find the liquid compositions of each of the individual components. Likewise, if we knew the relative volatilities of the components, we could still find the liquid compositions. Now, these equations will enable us, in order to calculate the composition for the vapour and the liquid formed for both the bubble point and the dew point, respectively. So, as a brief summary of the calculation, so this is the, the, the procedure for the bubble point at constant pressure. And the, the calculation procedure for the dew point is exactly the same. So, the first thing that we would do is we would assume or guess a temperature, then determine the values of Kc, and we would use the relationship of Kc will equal 1 over, this is for the bubble point, 1 over the summation of the relative volatility multiplied by the liquid composition for each of the components. If our value of Kc that we calculated is the same as the value of Kc we obtained from the graph for our assumed temperature, then this would be the bubble point. If not, then we would have to recalculate the value of Kc in order to obtain a new value for the temperature. And then we would just read the temperature from the graph 
and then we could use the calculated KC value and repeat the process until, again, it falls within the limits. Now, if you want to see the graphs, then we have these um, as the additional learning material for our uh, heat transfer and unit operations courses. So I'll put a link in the description uh, to both of them for your reference. But that is the general process in order to determine the bubble point. And of course, the inverse would just be for the, the equations that we've seen for the dew point, the process is exactly the same. So that's the end of this lesson. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this was helpful in understanding the concept of the bubble point and the dew point. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us reach as many chemical engineering students as possible. Thank you for your time and we hope to see you in another video.